G'day there, I'm Andy Judd from the band Garage Hymnal. Um, I play keyboards and we're going to be talking today about the different sounds that you can get out of a keyboard. Um, because we're not just playing kind of acoustic piano sounds um, often in this style of music, um, probably kind of 60% of the time I'm playing a normal kind of acoustic piano sounding patch. Um, but the rest of the time, there's a variety of other sounds which might be appropriate. And the thing is, the different sounds require a different technique or a different approach to your improvisation. So I'm going to quickly go through, this is not my, um, my main kind of um, garage or gigging keyboard, but I've chosen it because um, the sounds on it are quite similar to what you might find in your average kind of church um, kind of uh, piano at the front. It's mainly got a really great piano sound. Uh, it's also though, like a lot of, this is a Yamaha S90, but like a whole lot of other Roland keyboards, um, for example. It's got a whole lot of good other sounds. They're not maybe kind of the best in the world, uh, but they're going to sound good. So I'm just going to go through them um, and kind of give you a demonstration. So we'll start off with this, the obvious, normally the first sound that you get to on a keyboard like this is the normal acoustic piano sound. Uh, be careful to pick a, a piano which sits well in the mix that you're playing in. This one's quite a thick sound. Sometimes um, I would uh, recommend actually going to a slightly more bright sound, which will cut through the mix. So just be looking out for that. Um, you might find a whole lot of digital piano sounds on here. Really, they're kind of for your 80s kind of power ballad. power ballad kind of thing. I wouldn't use heaps of that. Um, next you come to the kind of organs. Now it's key with the organs to make sure that you don't do a pipe organ, that you head for something which is meant to sound a bit like a Hammond uh, B3 with Leslie. Um, Hammond were an organ company, they made organs um, so that homes around America could have um, a, a fake organ sound, but actually it sounds very different to an actual pipe organ. A pipe organ sound like this. <laughs> is great if you don't have a real pipe organ and you're trying to do that kind of thing. Not heaps useful in a lot of songs uh, in terms of contemporary music. So you're heading for something a bit more like... A bit softer sounding like that, a bit more like a jazz organ or a rock organ. Uh, the cool thing to look out for uh, is make sure it's something that's got uh, a little bit darkness to it. If you're going to be playing underneath other stuff, you don't want to be too percussive. So this one's kind of got a little bit of percussion, but it's mostly... Fundamental. Um, the, the way organs work is that they've got a whole lot of different um, pipes or tone wheels in the case of an electric organ, which give different um, frequencies, different uh, uh, overtones from the fundamental. The more higher overtones it puts in, the more kind of bright and interesting the sound will be, but it will probably be too interesting if you put too many in, if that makes sense. So you're looking for something with just fundamental and maybe some uh, other overtones, uh, lower, bigger overtones, if that makes sense. Um, if that doesn't make sense, that's fine. You're looking for a dark sound uh, like this. Uh, I wouldn't play two notes now, unless you're trying to do the bass sound. I'd just play two notes and often. Um, notice that when you hit a note on a piano, um, the decay takes away the sound quite quickly. It kind of goes away. There's a big attack and a bit of delay. On an organ, it keeps on going the same. So you're, you're holding long notes. It's a bit more like you're playing um, like a string instrument or a brass instrument. Um, so you want to be doing that. Uh, look out for any effects which let you kind of change the speed of the vibrato or if it's got a simulation of a Leslie speaker. Um, a Leslie speaker was something that people attached to the Hammond organs which made it sound kind of wobbly and dy dynamic and interesting and uh, it was literally just a speaker in a box which rotates. Um, if you have one of them, I've got one in my garage. Um, it's, they sound amazing, um, but they have simulators on, on these things which you can hear the change even over YouTube um, between the slow speed and the fast speed. I generally use the fast speed when I'm moving through a guide note or a progressive note into the next chord. It creates a kind of sense of dynamicness. Um, a lot of what you want to be doing with these is playing kind of two note chords as I said, but particularly um, 
the, the five and the one with the one on top. Um, so in a kind of a, 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 um, a song in the key of C, I'll be playing two, two fingers in my left hand, a G and a C. string kind of sounds, different technique again, you've got to watch out for what type of strings they are. Um, some strings are in the kind of um, attacky, um, kind of uh, they've got a strong attack and not a lot of decay. Um, they're good for playing melodies. So you have... And often good kind of a cello goes down that low. Um, that's cool, but it's not, um, it's great for playing um, uh, kind of melody notes because it's got that strong attack. Um, it may be a little bit too present, a little bit too uh, interesting a sound to do more background stuff. For more background stuff, I'd go for more of an ensemble sound with less attack. Or more accurately with a slower attack. See how when I play it takes a while to ramp up. That's perfect for your kind of swelling sounds underneath um, for the background. It kind of creates a really nice movement behind it, but you can't play fast stuff on it. So if I try to play a, you know, a fast melody, you really lose track of the attack of the notes. It's really for long things. So just be listening for where the attack is. Does the note come on quickly, in which case the percussion of the note is the key thing, or does it take a while to move into it? So that's kind of a an analog string sound, a fake string sound, an ensemble string sound, they're really good um, for the start of um, songs. I would play something like that at the start of, for instance, Ferris Lord Jesus, where you kind of... And the guitars come in, bum, 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 that kind of thing. Um, I think a cool thing to look out for, a lot of synths have these at the moment, which is great. There were these things, these string machines, um, which literally worked by having a um, a tape of a string which would be played at different speeds and they make um, an amazing sound um, yeah, um, yeah they, that sounds kind of great um, but yeah that's if in some sounds that's kind of a it's called tape strings on this um, look out for that on your keyboards um, I'd stay away from kind of um, there's certain kind of synthy sounds which work much better in other styles of music um, to what you're likely to be playing in church. So the kind of um, kind of fast, kind of nasty synth sound work great in pop or in kind of progressive metal or something. Um, I, you'd be working really hard to find a place for that. Um, so I normally steer clear, not always, but normally steer clear of that. Um, kind of weird synth sounds that kind of take away. They can be really cool if used very, very sparsely um, because they can be kind of wild. Um, but they use this similar got a long attack and so you want to make them in space. Um, this kind of, kind of, yeah, again, uh, sure. Um, yeah, what I was looking for was a pad like this. Like an organ, you're kind of looking at very long notes, and you're looking at really kind of um, two finger voicings um, just moving underneath um, the chords. That's like an analog pad kind of thing, it's really quite dark and, and, and quite lovely. Um, and the final thing I haven't yet mentioned, which I need to find, um, find here, is like a um, electric piano sound. The model on the thing called like a Rhodes piano or a Wurlitz sound, this is more of a Rhodes sound, it's kind of a glass. Uh, it's kind of quite dark and quite beautiful. And I use it for um, things where I want to be able to provide some attack, uh, but I also want to be able to do long held kind of notes. Sometimes there's like a, a vibrato on them. Lots of thirds and sixes um, because that is a really nice interval. So, if I want to play uh, the start of Take My Life, it's a B minor. In my right hand, I'll be playing a D and an F sharp. And that kind of works really nicely. Uh, 
a similar one is a, a Wurlitzer, uh, which I'm sure is here. Normally they're a little bit, they sound a bit more hairy and they often are amplified or distorted. <laughs> Sustain, um, but they're, they're quite good for kind of, to be used in child's play. Uh, that kind of thing. So they're basically the kind of sounds that you're looking at on a keyboard. Listen out to how they appear on the radio, on records that you like. Um, have a listen through the keyboard parts and just think about the, those principles of the attack, um, the start of the note. How does it come on? Does it come on quickly or does it come on um, with a long kind of attack? Because that changes how you play. And also the texture, where does it sit in the background or not? Um, is it kind of a long, dark, back kind of sound, or is it quite a present, bright, shiny sound which is going to get everyone's attention? Uh, and if there's, you want to sit in the background and you want a dark sound, if you want to grab everyone's attention, you want more of a bright sound. And that's kind of just play with your keyboard and, and work out some really great sounds and use them.